everybody. Uh, David Frost here from SATSA, the CEO. Um, just wanted to welcome you all to our second uh, uh, partnership uh, event with our colleagues at the Northern Cape Tourism Authority, um, our speed marketing uh, event that you guys are going to be part of. Uh, I, I think this is an incredibly exciting initiative. Um, you know, these are the types of things that we we really hang our hats on in this in this sort of uh, these sort of dark hours while we wait for the dawn to break in terms of inbound tourism. Um, the light is at the end of the tunnel, and I, we certainly are looking forward to to getting things up and running. I would imagine around the begin, the, the middle of the year. But the Northern Cape and its and its and its entire sort of product offering, which is incredibly diverse and a lot more nuanced and uh, boutiquey than I think a lot of people um, realise, is is to my mind it's the it's the ultimate COVID friendly tourism destination on the planet. It really is um, an amazing USP in that, in that program that's been put together is going to show you some amazing stuff. The fact that this has all been put together in seven really user-friendly packaging um, routes is, I think, an amazing um, um, bit of work from the uh, private sector and the Northern Cape Tourism Authority guys. So you're going to go and you know get a get a really good idea of the diverse product that. Uh, People are able to experience, and obviously, we, from you know, most of our guys are, are, are targeted into the inbound market. But in this particular time, there's also this massive domestic market, and I think to bring and take the Northern Cape through to the domestic market in any way that we can is something that we should be looking at um, in the um, short term, and and it's something that we should we should not lose sight of when the international opens up as well. Um, and then finally, I just want to just share with you that one of my favorite bands of all time is the Kalahari Radio Kiss. And I mean, I think that they should become brand ambassadors for the Northern Cape. I think their, their music is rooted in that particular area. Their name is self-explanatory. And um, the characters that really grew up in those Castrol ads, which was you know, seminally located in the Kalahari, um, I think should be brought to life. And I think there's a I think there's an amazing um, campaign that can be put together quite cost effective and it will appeal in the first instance to the domestic market. So that's my ponytail thought for the afternoon, but I wish you guys happy hunting. I wish you um, a good, a good session. And uh, yeah, guys, I mean, hang into this week. We're all in this together and we will, we will come out of it on the other end. So fuss bait and have a good time. Cheers. Good afternoon, everybody. Hi everybody, uh, thank you for joining us. Just some admin and, and housekeeping before we get started. Um, you'll notice that you might not have entered the meeting with uh, the right name. Just a last chance for everybody to, to rename themselves. You do that by clicking on your video, your video feed. Top right hand corner, there's a little blue block with three dots. You click on that uh, three, those three dots and you click on rename and then you can rename yourself to your company or your first name and the company that you represent. Okay. And now, uh, Diana, over to you. Thank you very, very much. I'm starting my video for just a little bit. Um, our signal is not very strong. So we find if we don't run on video, it helps a little bit, but I would like to thank everybody that has joined us here today. I'm sure you will, as David was saying, the Northern Cape is so special. We have such unique experiences, which you will experience for yourself as well. And we will start with the video and then I will talk some a little bit further with you later.
Cape experience. Um, the Northern Cape is the largest province of South Africa. We have two of the world-renowned deserts, two of Africa's largest rivers, two world heritage sites, seven regions, five regions, seven routes, and all of it just makes the Northern Cape the truly most beautiful holiday experience. It's also very easy to access the Northern Cape. Of course, we would like people to really do a road travel to, to the Northern Cape and really truly experience, but especially for our international clients, when we have them again, um, they need to save some time. So it's easy. And also for our domestic tourists that would like to have the air experience, um, two airports from Johannesburg and Cape Town serviced, Kimberley and Uppington. We also have all the major car hire companies available at these two airports. We also have the Blue Train and Rovers Rail stop over in the Northern Cape. As I said, there are five regions. The first region is the Diamond Fields region. So this is situated around the Kimberley area. And every region has got a route that allows clients and visitors to explore the, the, the region um, as well as all the activities that is on those, those routes. The Kalahari, it is the Kuruman area up to the northern part of, of um, uh, the, the, the province. And there we also have a route. The Green Calari, of course, it was very much in the news lately with the magnificent uh, falls and the sightings of Hal uh, the, uh, the um, Okhrabis Falls. There are also two routes, the Kuba Tree route, um, Kuba Tree route and the Kalahari Ray Dune route. The Karua, of course, the Karua is the Karua. It is just vast landscapes with the windmills. And there we also have two routes available. And then Namakwa is also a part from the Green Kalari that is the most famous for the Northern Cape. Everybody knows the annual flowers, but there are also very many other things that are available in that area that we would see as our products um, do their presentations. So the Northern Cape is for breathtaking natural wonders, cultural exploration, and incredibly real people, real relaxation, real shared time and real adventure. And I think in the current time, we do need all of that. And of course, solo adventure. Um, so, but I would like to also, while I'm here, just stop a little bit at the beautiful town of Sutherland. Um, we we like to, pr to promote Sutherland a little bit because it is so close to, to, to Cape Town and the, the Western Cape. Um, and it is so unique always as an incentive destination, as a family destination. And again, once we have our international clients as a, as a nice add on um, when they are looking for a two night, three night um, experience. So Sutherland is just four hours away from Cape Town, and it is great for a weekend or a short micro um, getaway. Um, and it is for families, for the adventurers, or if you're just simply looking for a relaxed, romantic getaway. And that is definitely where Rojo Kloof is, and Rojo Kloof will talk a little bit later about themselves. So various activities that one can do and experience, the unique culture and history on either a self-guided tour or a guided tour from one of the town guides. And one can experience the history of the town. Of course, the very famous Van Beek Lowe's or the Grote Kerk, it's the very first church that was built in the hinterland during that time. Or my personal base is to really go and explore the botanical and the history, the natural history of the of that um, region with paleontology, fossil and botanical walks. Other activities, well, there are numerous farms in the surrounding area of the town and all of them offer various activities, walking trails, hiking, mountain biking trails, horse riding, various farm experiences and game drives. And this is all in various levels. So if you are a family with small children, you have easy um, walks uh, to go and do and activities. If you are an adventurous a group of friends, you can really go to the hectic mountain biking, the hiking trails, etc., etc., Or you can just chill and enjoy drinking coffee. But of course, it is most, most well known for the stargazing. Um, it is one of the best locations in the world for stargazing. The clear skies at night are ablaze with absolutely million stars. And if you want to see more than just the night sky with your naked eye, one can also do stargazing at one of the following. 
Sutherland Planetarium. It's in the middle of the town. And they are also incidentally the only person um, privately owned uh, planetarium. Salt, and they offer tours during the day as well as night. Salt, and we are glad to hear that Salt is now open again. Of course, they were also under the COVID regulations that people could not really do a proper tour, but we have been informed they are now also open for day tours. And they also often offer evening stargazing tours only on select evenings. And then of course, Sternland on the outskirts of the town, they offer evening stargazing and night sky tours every night. But also it is our winter wonderland and that is also very popular during winter. But that is just very, very short. If any of the trade partners want to have a proper full presentation of the Northern Cape and all its um, offerings, all the various routes and itinerary of, uh, possibilities, please do get in touch with me and I will arrange a virtual experience or a meeting just for you. And we will can discuss the entire province and how and where and what. Here are my details. But thank you very much. Do enjoy the virtual um, experience of the Northern Cape. And afterwards, we will have a prize or two. And we will combine all the wonderful prizes that the product owners are giving us into an experience of the Korua Highlands um, so that people can explore the, the, um, the route in that area, Sutherland, Fraserburg, et cetera. And then Karua Oasis, which is on the N12 between Cape Town and um, um, the Northern Cape and Johannesburg. And that is really the Karua area with Hanover and um, Brookstown, and of course, close to Hopetown and Kimberley. So do enjoy your afternoon and we'll speak later. Thank you. Once again, for those who joined the meeting a bit late, thank you very much for joining us for uh, this afternoon. Quickly, some, some housekeeping. We ask that you mute yourself when it's not your turn uh, to talk uh, or switch off your video when it's not your turn to present. Um, and you'd notice that you might have joined the meeting as Jeanette Bredenhan. We just ask you to rename yourself to your first name and the company that you represent, please. Um, then first up, we've got um, we got Roche Kloof. Uh, Joy from Roche Kloof would be, be presenting to us. Um, guys, and also just for our presenters, uh, remember that we said we'd like to keep to the four minute limit. Uh, so if you can, that'll be great. Otherwise, we are going to run over time. Thanks, Joy. Over to you. Can you see me? Can you see the slideshow? Um, yes, there we can. Go for it. Welcome to Rochekloof, which actually dates back to 1756 as a farm. Where are we situated? We're approximately 350 kilometers from Cape Town in the Karoo and 15 kilometers outside of Sutherland. So very easy access to Sutherland. We're not just a comfortable bed in the Great Karoo. We offer a comprehensive Karoo experience. Activities available are multiple and varied and will entertain the whole family from toddlers to grandparents. Everybody today with COVID is looking for expansive, safe spaces and guys, that's what we offer. We offer guided nature drives. We do guided hikes to Sol Pieterkop which is actually the youngest volcano in Africa, so very worthwhile. We do cycling and hiking, both guided and unguided. And then of course, stars and planets, located at an altitude of between 14 to 1700 meters with magnificent clear skies and expansive plains. Rochekloof is truly home to the greatest heavens on earth. Um, the, the, pictures, the skies, I just, I can't get over it. For our birders, we do have an extensive birding list available for the bird enthusiasts, and then hugely proud to be part of the Endangered Wildlife Trust Cheetah Metapopulation Project, which seeks to establish a viable pool of cheetah genes in South Africa. It's incredibly humbling for us to have brought cheetah back into a region where the last historically captured cheetah presence was way back in the 1860s. 
We do guided cheetah tracking for anybody who is interested. We also have guided outings to the fossil field with fossil bones from the Permian period spread out over a wide area. And if those of you don't know the Permian period, it's basically from 250 to 500 million years ago. Right, we are an all year round favorite with the local market. We offer spacious self-catering accommodation units where guests may linger and gaze at the stars, the game, snow-covered Karoo in winterland, or just enjoy the peace and tranquility. Then for those wanting to be a little bit more pampered, we have our Ryan Suites, which are luxury open planned accommodation units with three course dinners and full breakfast included. Perfect for touring groups, and of course the international market. Then the Rittersol Dining Hall is actually an authentically restored historic farm house dating back to the late 1700s, lovingly turned into a great dining hall reminiscent of the Middle Ages, perfectly suited for guest dining, functions, weddings, and celebrations. Comfortable comfortable capacity for 50 guests. Patio Stoop provides extended space for outside dining and gatherings around a great bonfire. Then Rochekloof is proud to offer its own wines and guests may book wine tasting sessions to experience our quality wines. The grapes for the red wines originate from the vines of the Sutherland Karoo region and at 1500 meters above sea level, this is the coldest wine producing area. We are busy with the harvest and come the end of March, we are hoping to have approximately 4,000 bottles of wine to offer our guests. Then as a biosphere reserve, Rochkloof endeavors to keep its ecological footprint small as possible. And we have a greenhouse to feed all um, greens and vegetables to our guests. Don't forget the botanical beauties and please never forget Rochelkloof in winter. Um, we do have rates available on the website. STO and group rates are also available on request. And all that I need to say now is thank you very much for the time you've allowed me. Thank you very much, Joy. Uh, next up, We've got Martinez Krier from Karua Highlands. Hello guys, I'm Martinez. Um, I'm a product owner within the Islands is the last missing piece of the puzzle consisting of seven Northern Cape routes. Uh, you do not know of the a piece of puzzle until it's lost. You look for it, and when you find it, you taste it. And this is the Karua Highlands route. It is the last lost puzzle. At first glance, it do not have the bucket list attractions like Rifterfield or Gravis, but it is the type of experience you must experience to value it. It is the type of experience clients will be thankful, and as some said, finding a fossil, it is the highlight of our tour. It is the type of experience that will be promoted by word of mouth, potentially increasing your client base. Allow me then to guide you through our Karua Islands route. There you see the map. Uh, the route is situated on the southern part of Northern Cape. The entrance route down is Sutherland that you just heard about, Calvinia, Nevertville, Ritzdown, and Beaufort uh, on the west. Uh, we concentrate on the main members on the route. We start on the bottom of Fraserburg. It is one of the last authentic Karoo towns. It has farm and, and town guest houses, attractions of fossil footprints, fossil museum and fossil hunting, as well as town just with a registered tour guide. Then in the middle is, is Loxton. Um, it's the link between Fraserburg and Victoria West. There is a lovely Victorian style Karoo houses. Those small, they have several uh, initiative uh, community projects. Victoria West is a very historic town, once a prominent town where airplanes stopped to refuel. It is known for its uh, Apollo Theater, still in operating today. A registered tour guide will show you the rich history of, of the town. 
In top is, is Fosburg. Uh, Fosburg is a charming small town with impressive career style buildings. Carnarvon, it is a relative big, bigger town, but still with the career experience. It is home of the SKA a radio telescope linked to, to South. Williston is the town uh, ideal to stop over in route to Namakoland or Hoteng. Uh, farm and town guest houses uh, is available. The route is there. The product, product owners and the Cape Tourism Authority work hard to establish it. We will gladly assist you to compile an uh, itinerary tailor made for you. I will then give you a bit. I will use this a lot, but if you something pick your eye, just contact me. My particulars is on the brochure. Uh, the tour guides, two regions, tour guides in the region in Victoria West and in Fraserburg. Uh, Victoria West uh, tours a policy theater in the footprints and fossil hunting. Uh, Fraserburg with the pepper pot and some uh, buildings there. Then in Fraserburg, Oaklipski South Catering. Accommodation and, and camping site. Uh, the clip is at Fraserburg. Uh, you go to the Porsche's Fossil Farm, it's an experience farm stay. Uh, the Lapa, you, you, just you and, uh, and yourself, whoever. Uh, then also in Fraserburg is a container, Munga, uh, where, where you can stay. The Carros guest house is in Loxton, a really nice looking guest house. In Victoria West, as I explained, um, and then Mountain World, it is the oldest guest farm in South Africa. And uh, there's also attractions, the, um, the sun engravings and the, the, the bell day. And you've got Anis Inn in Williston and Campsite. And uh, the Mana Restaurant with the Super Sloppy uh, Guest House in Williston. Got Willis also uh, establishment there. And Williston at 21. Uh, uh, also a, a guest house. Then lastly, there is the, the, the route. Um, so thank you very much and uh, enjoy your stay here in our region. Thank you very much, um, Martins. Um, guys, next up, we've got Khoisan Career Conservancy. And as far as I understand, uh, Ronel is filling in for uh, PC Ferreira. Uh, Ronel, are you here? The next person. Uh, Roland, sorry, I'm, yes, I'm not sorry if there's a problem with the sound, but I'm not hearing anything. Um, okay, is, is Ronel here? Maybe we can um, move her to a little bit later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll give uh, Ronel a chance when she comes back, guys. Next up, then we've got career travel dimensions. And on CDC, is she here? on the, the chat. Otherwise, Donna from Adventure Kayaking. Um, hello. If if we do not find the uh, Karua Kwasan or Karua Dimensions, I think uh, Noneda was having a link, um, a, a connection problem. I will do at the end. I will just talk a little bit about the Karua Oasis route and and those two businesses. All right. Um, you to start your present, uh, presentation, please. From Adventure Kayaking. Okay, it's Lorna Marburg from Adventure Kayaking. Cool, thank you. Can, will you start sharing your screen, please? Yes, can you see the screen? Uh, no, I can see Zoom. On your yeah, side. We can see, see your Zoom. whole screen. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Lorna. <laughs> Hi there. <laughs> Sorry, my daughter's helping me because I'm using her computer and it's a bit no of a... Problem. Is 
Somebody uh, else's Lisa. screen seems to be on there. Uh, Lorna, just maybe open the presentation. Okay, can you see the presentation? Yes, yeah. Still okay. Not. Yes. No, they can see the presentation. So I'll just have to do, run it like this. Um, so you can see the first page. If you just start the slideshow, that'll be better for us. Start the slideshow. Can you see that? Yes, there we go. Thank you very much. Okay, okay you, let's thanks. start. Okay, we are um, situated on the Funnekloof Dam. So we're quite um, close to the Orange River as well, two kilometers away, which makes it easy for us to run our four and one day river trips and dam trips. Um, introducing my husband, um, Gavin Meyerberg, who is the, um, well, he found, founded this company. He's a guide and owner. I do the catering and the planning. And then lastly, we have Steve, who is also one of our professional guides. We keep our trips to a minimum of 10 people so we can give personalized attention to our groups. The following is supplied by us, all included. Boats, PFDs, which are personal flotation devices, paddles, the camping equipment is tents, mattresses, pillows, linen, blankets, crockery, and cutlery. The catering is delicious meals from the time you arrive till you leave. Two nights accommodation off the water and traveling to and from the river is also included. Drums for clothing and linen, big and small cooler boxes, eight liter bag of frozen water. So basically you don't need to think of bringing anything. We send you a list of whatever you, you haven't, is not on our, our um, supplied list. We have designer trips to be easy for anyone to come and enjoy the adventure without having to worry about being unprepared. Paddles consist of plus minus 20 kilometers per day, easy for children and not the not so fit. Some nice rapids to negotiate makes this fun for the whole family. Our two experienced guides are there to take you safely down the river. So come and experience this trip, you'll never forget it. Um, no photographs or explanation can explain the beauty of the Orange River and the experience you will have. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Lorna. Um, next up, we've got Chris van der Post uh, from Kui Kui River Lodge. Sorry if any of my pronunciations or, or anything incorrect, guys. Um, no I'll allow Chris, allow Chris to say the right the name correctly. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Um, hear you. Are you going to share a presentation with us? I am. I am going to. Um, let me just get it on here. Share screen and a presentation. Um, there's the slideshow from the beginning. Uh, can you guys see it? Not yet. You haven't started sharing your screen yet. Okay, that's weird that it's not on there. Just share screen. Is it sharing or not? Should mm -hmm. Okay, screen. There we go. There we go. Yeah. Okay. From the beginning. Right. Is that good? All right. That's great. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we've had a couple of funny pronunciations for Kwe Kwe River Lodge, from Kwe Kwe to guys coming there, and um, plenty of funny ones. Just a short thing, Lorna is brilliant. They often pass by the lodge there. Uh, I can highly recommend them. So on, on your rafting trips, they're really good. Um, Kwe Kwe is situated just um, on the river, so compared to most of the guys, I guess, yeah, you can see there at the back of the lodge, you can see the beautiful Karoo, and then you're right on the Orange River, so it's green and, and a total different look once you get to the, to the lodge. Um, we're situated about an uh, hour and a half, hour 20 minutes south of Kimberley, close to the town of Hopetown, between Hopetown and Urania. Um, our rooms are very nicely decor decorated. It's of a high class with proper cotton linen, 
and a very upmarket feel to, to our rooms. Um, we've got beautiful outside showers. Each one of the rooms has their own private deck um, with all the amenities you would expect from a, from a nice lodge. It, we have standalone units and they're all private. So um, they're luxurious and, and quite nice to stay in. Uh, the lodge itself has a brilliant deck overlooking the, the orange uh, with enough different little lounges and, and dining areas uh, that you can use through your stay. Um, there's air conditioning in the rooms and the lodge itself. We have an on-site um, restaurant. In our rates, there's three meals included. Um, and yeah, there's, it still gives a little bit of a bush feel with, with the fireplaces and, and all those type of things that you, you get there. Our food is of a very high standard. We, we try, or we proud ourselves on our Karoo cuisine. So you would typically, uh, an evening meal would, would consist of, of uh, freshly baked bread and then some sort of pre-starter, a starter, and then a rich Karoo meal. And then uh, uh, we always have cake or some sort of, of dessert afterwards. Um, the, the lodge is situated on the farm Sidon, which is part of a game farm of roughly 20,000 hectares. We have 19 species of plains game on the, on the game farm. Um, with, yeah, it's, there's game viewing, there's nature walks, there's amazing bird viewing. Um, so those are all very, very fun things to do. We also offer world-class guided fly fishing. Um, the, the stretch of river around Koikoi is really amazing for fly fishing. And we have fly fishermen flocking from all over the world uh, to, to come to us. Obviously with COVID, it died down a little, the, the international clients, but we still cater for our South African guests. And yeah, we're quite well known under the fly fishing circles. We have on-site professional fly fishing guides that will take you out on cataracts, which is ideal drift pontoon boats for fly fishing. We also do river drifts on these, these rafts. Um, they work really well and they're very stable and comfortable to go down the river with. Uh, something that we also do for the birders is, is do a drift on these rafts um, where you can actually take your, your camera gear and so forth on safely and, and see all the, all the bird species from the water. We also offer mountain biking. Um, we've got a three-day stage event um, going at present, which um, runs over 120 kilometers, a lot of single track and nice technical routes, um, really a, a world-class uh, mountain biking trail. Uh, so that's, that's one of our nice activities. We've got an on-site spa that, that offers a nice relaxing feel. And then we also have like a lot of the, the places in the Northern Cape Bushman engravings that one can view. Uh, we we do river rafting. Um, there's there's a really interesting um, Boer War site that one can visit, and then our building is amazing. We we're right on the Free State border, so you've got your Free State um, grasslands combining with the Boerkarua and the the more um, Kalahari feel towards Kimberley. And then, um, and that all comes together on the river. So there's an amazing array of bird species around. We do have conference facilities that, that's really comfortable and, and works well. Yeah, that's Koikwe in a nutshell. Um, and we, yeah, just from, from our side, I hope that you guys look around for us. We're quite easy to get from Kimberley and we look forward to hosting you. And on our rates, sorry, just one last thing. We do offer a commission on agents. Um, so please inquire if you're interested in any of this and I'd gladly get in contact. Thank you. Yeah. 
Thank you very much, Chris. Um, guys, next up, we've got Nadia de Clark. Uh, and Roland, our... Roland, yes, I'm yeah. terribly sorry. Um, can we just Problem. give um, Noneda no a chance? She is here so that we can just continue our travel yes. around the Northern Cape. Thank yes. you. Sure, no, no problem. Nonedu, over to you, you can go for it. Um, my name is Nongla Dosiekui. I'm the owner of Cairo Travel Dimensions in the R. Uh, it's a travel agency and tour operating company that specializes in horse cart tours. The horse cart can accommodate nine adults and uh, 16 children. It is suitable for group bookings. Also, uh, as we are in the R, in the Karoo, you don't say that you know something about the Karoo unless we have visited the Karoo. You have to experience the culture, you have to eat the food, and you have to speak the language of the Karoo, which is Africans with pride. We are a warm people that are very hospitable. You can even experience the warmth from the first person that you will greet in the R. Um, some of our tours include the ghost tour, which is only offered in the R at 12 o'clock midnight, the science and technology tour, which includes Carnival, the SKA, and also the three solar parks, which, is, which are in the R. We also conduct a helicopter tour above the solar park, which is the biggest solar park in the Southern Hemisphere. We also conduct horse cart rides and horse cart trails. We also do self-guided bicycle tours. Uh, because we are also a travel agency, we do accommodation bookings, team building programs, we organize uh, vacations in and around the Karoo region, namely in the towns like Vandakloof, Carnarvon, and Novel Spont, where there is the greater Carib Dam. Um, here is a photo of, of our nine-seated horse cart to go together with a bird-eyed view of the solar park from the helicopter tour. Uh, you can contact us on the mentioned contact details for any bookings in the Karoo region. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for that, uh, Nanedu, and apologies for the, the technical glitches and so on. Uh, guys, next up, we've got Nadia de Clark from Matano uh, Game Reserve. And we've got a, bit of, um, a technical as well. Um, we'll get back to you in her follow-up email with her proper presentation. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll show you a bit of her, her um, property and our website. And she's also got a video for us to, to watch, which we'll share with you in, in the link. So Nadia, if you, you'd like to talk us through Matani, please. Hi guys, it's a pleasure for me to speak to you. Um, we are Matani Private Game Reserve. We are 55 kilos from Kimberley, 17 kilos from Barclay West in the Karo area of the Northern Cape. We are family owned and run. Our owner is actually Dr. Jan Crick. He's quite a famous veterinarian. He started um, in the 1980s to import roan and sable disease-free buffalo. And he's actually quite a legend in the veterinary um, field. We are... Um, we love having clients over. We pride ourselves on having strangers book in and family leave. Our food is of exceptional quality. We, we pride ourselves on doing nice big portions and wonderful traditional South African food. We have luxury 
limited accommodation. We have suites that can accommodate families for self-catering. Um, and we provide two game drives a day. We also provide very unique things like helicopter rides where you can view our animals. You can go on game capture with the doctor and his sons where they would sedate the animal and measure the length of the horns or, um, you know, any of those kind of things that sedate the animals to, if one is in trouble, to give it medical attention. So that's quite unique to us. Dr. Johan and his son Johan are both helicopter pilots and Jock is the current um, owner and manager he took over from his father. So yeah, we pride ourselves on hospitality, family, and giving you the absolute best service that we can. Uh, we have a passion for our clients and we have a passion for animals, for the wildlife, for the Northern Cape. So we pride ourselves on bringing you the absolute best experience possible. And the, our favorite thing is clients that come back. So I hope this answered all of your questions. Unfortunately, we can't get our video open, but please, if there's any questions, you can just contact me. Very much, uh, Nadia. And guys, I'll share this, the, the video, the promo video of Matanu in the chat area. If you'd like I'm sorry, to... Roland. I can't hear you. You know, I'm just saying thank you very much for your presentation. I'll, I'll, I've shared the video link in the, the chat area, everybody. And Nadia will then you'll then uh, share your presentation with everybody afterwards. Thank you so much, Roland. I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Uh, next up, we've got uh, Nolan from Platformtain Lodge and Conference Center. Nolan, over to you. Yes. So I'm representing Platformtain Lodge and Conference Center, which is quite a brand new establishment in the Northern Cape. Platfontein Lodge and Conference Centre is owned by the Kung and the Kwe impoverished Bushman communities that used to live in Schmidtsdrift. And um, it is a project also in partnership with the National Department of Tourism. Now, what makes Platfontein Lodge and Conference Centre so unique? Firstly, it's managed by Clarissa Carsten Specialized Services. And as a company, we've got quite extensive experience in facility management. Um, we currently also owning and managing um, the Namakwa guest farm, which is in the Namakwa land as well. Um, and what we pride ourselves in is also our experience in hosting weddings, high profile visits, and also our cuisine because we've got in-house chefs that tailor make the catering according to the need and the want of our clients. At Platfontein Lodge, we've got an upmarket intimate 50 seater restaurant, which makes it quite nice and intimate for anybody that would want to come and have private dining. And we also have an in-house Indian chef, which specializes in Indian cuisine, so Indian vegetarian and also South Indian cuisine. And that is also quite rare in the Northern Cape because you don't find it just anywhere. And might I just add that our chef is actually from India. So um, at Platfontein, we also have a conference facility which can cater for up to 450 delegates with breakaway rooms as well and also accommodation facilities, which is 12 ensuite bedrooms, which can sleep up to 37 people, a bar area with a big screen, a swimming pool with a large courtyard, the restaurant, as I've indicated, and different lounge areas. And what also makes Platfontein very unique is that right next door, we've got the Wildebeest Kale Rock Art Center, 
where they actually have um, artwork from the Bushman community and also quite uh, an extensive number of items which would indicate the, the difference um, in terms of history and where they come from. You can also go on different hiking trails to see the, the grave sites that they have here. And we are quite close to Kimberley, um, like I indicated earlier, 13 kilometers, but also Barclay West, about 16 kilometers from where we are. So that is Plattfontein Lodge and Conference Center. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nolan. I appreciate your, your presentation. Sorry, we'll uh, share this presentation as well at the end with everybody. And the info would be in all the, um, in the, the booklet that was shared with all the buyers uh, earlier today. If, again, guys, if you've got any questions or you've got any feedback, reach out to the specific uh, property owner on the chat area um, or direct your questions to um, in the chat area. Uh, we're happy to put you in contact with the right people um, at, for them to answer your, your questions. Uh, next up, we've got Owen Christina from Vitsun. Owen, I'll share your presentation for you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Nice speaking to you. And um, once again, welcome to the Northern Cape. It's a great place. Can you see me? You can see, just move your screen a bit down, then we can see your whole face, actually. There uh, we go. No, I don't want you to see my face, I want you to see <laughs> my presentation. <laughs> no problem, we've got your presentation uh, on as well. Is it on? Yeah. Okay, great stuff. Okay, um, I'm actually a stand-in for John Martins, uh, the manager of Bitsun. He's unfortunately unwell at the moment. Uh, but I've been involved with Vitsan since 1998, uh, so I do know a little bit of it. Um, just quickly, um, I don't know why it doesn't want to move. I'm controlling the, the slides for you, so just let me know when you want oh, to go okay. to the next slide. All right, can you go to the next slide, please? Yeah. The next slide will indicate where we are situated. Um, if you look to the right of your screen, you will see a Kimberley that's got a little circle around it. And to the left-hand side on the far left is Uppington. And that little circle in the middle is Vitsant Nature Reserve. Uh, Sun Nature Reserve is a provincial nature reserve which was established in the early 90s. And the reason why it was established is that um, they wanted to conserve the, the, the dune complex within the nature reserve. And as you will see later, or um, yeah, there's a, there's a whole lot of water under the dunes. And, and that was the main reason. And at the time when they established the, the nature reserve, they found it, uh, people, there was a lot of interest uh, for people to come and visit the reserve, and that's why they developed all the tourism facilities within the reserve. Uh, if you can go to the next screen, please. The next slide, please, Roland. Yep. Uh, what slide are you looking for? Uh, the uh, in the white dunes. This is the oh, next one. That's the one. I must actually take mine off, I think. Oh, there we go. Sorry, I was on, on the wrong window, yeah. Um, the, the uniqueness of Vitsant is the white sand dunes within uh, or surrounded uh, by the red Kalahari dunes. Um, the reason why the, the dunes are red in the Kalahari is that each little sand grain has got a, a oxide or a, a rust a piece around it, and that's what makes it, um, makes it red. The reason why the dunes are white uh, there at Vitsant is that there's an aquifer that, uh, that's, that uh, uh, it's like a quartzite bank uh, up to 75 meters deep. And over the years, the red sand of the Kalahari blown into the area and it rained and the water couldn't uh, drain away because of the, 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 the quartzite bank or the, the uh, aquifer. 
and and so it built up over the years and um all, all the reason why the yeah, why the sand is white there is that it's uh, the, all the little oxides have been washed off uh, the sand grains and that's why the the sand is white at the sun which is very unique within that area and i will i will speak about the um the, the uniqueness and and the water within that uh, nature reserve you can go to the next slide please um that's not, uh, nature reserve is is uh, people are welcome to explore it by foot there are roads within the reserve where you can go to different regions but most people like just to go for a nice walk on the dunes and explore uh, there are no time limits uh, that you have to be back in camp uh, so you can you can go and explore the the night uh, animals uh, you know after dark uh, and which people obviously find very interesting uh, next slide please Uh, just the, the facilities, all the facilities are built like the, the, the structures on this picture. That's just the, the reception area. Um, all those rocks and things that, that you see that's cladded on the outside uh, comes from the Langberg Mountain, which is just an adjacent to the Witsa Nature Reserve. Uh, that's the reception and kiosk shop area, which you see there. Next slide, please. Um, there are 10 luxury chalets at Whitsun. Um, they're all self-catering, but we do do catering on request or for groups. Uh, but again, uh, the, the, all the buildings are built in that fashion. And every chalet has been pinpointed from an aerial picture and is built with a, a great big uh, camel thorn tree uh, sort of in the middle of, of, of the chalet. All the chalets are also built in such a way that you do not see your neighbor um, and they're not on top of each other um, and and we we obviously encourage people to be as quiet as possible um, because uh, visitors come to to Vitsan to relax and enjoy the peace and tranquility that it offers Vitsan has also got something unique that i have not been able to pinpoint in the last 23 odd years that i've been visiting there and working there but there is just something about Vitsan that, that just makes you want to relax and chill. And even if I go there for work, I do not, uh, I do not really want to work as it's all you do, you want to relax. Next slide, please. Um, those are one of the rooms within our luxury chalets, just to give you an idea of the layout of the rooms. Every chalet consists of three bedrooms, one with a double bed, and two others with uh, two single beds in each. And then uh, on the other side, there is a, a, a bathroom with a bath, a separate shower and a separate toilet. And then there's a separate building that houses, houses the, the kitchen and the dining, uh, sorry, the kitchen and the lounge area. All the chalets are fully uh, air conditioned uh, because it does get a little bit hot in the Kalari now and then. Uh, but that's not to worry about too much. And, uh, and pe mostly people seek the outside areas. If you can just go to the next slide, please. Uh, sorry, that's, that's the kitchen area within the, the chalet, fully equipped with everything that you might need. Uh, next slide, please. Um, that's my favorite spot. Uh, that's the outside areas. As you can see, the beautiful... Uh, camel thorn trees that that surrounds the area and and is totally natural felt as you go out your front door and there's all the outside cooking areas and that's where most of the people find themselves during the day and and night next slide please uh just one of uh, one of two swimming pools uh, within the camp area uh, that one swimming pool is exclusively for the use of the people staying in the chalets and then we have another uh, swimming pool area with uh, just next to the caravan park um, and that caters for the caravan park and, and day visitors. Next slide, please. Um, that's just a, a nice picture of the outside area, braai area, and having all um, just getting ready for a nice braai um, in the evening. Next slide, please. The activities that we offer at the Sun Nature Reserve is as follows there's a beautiful bird hide the bird hide was specifically built 
uh, in a certain spot uh, where, where it's in the uh, the, uh, with, uh, it's in the way of, or, or in the direction of which the Namakwa you know, sandgrass um, uh, moves during the year, and people have seen up to 50,000 of these sandgrass around the bird hide, but it's normally it's quite serene, quiet, you see uh, there's about 145 different species of birds that fit some, um, of which the most uh, famous one is the sociable weaver, and there's some beautiful, big, huge nests of sociable weaver, uh, as I just mentioned. And uh, we have a botanical meander. It's a hiking trail where all the, the trees are uh, uh, explained and named so people can understand what they see. Bicycles for hire, people can go cycling. Uh, the most uh, uh, common, uh, the most favorite uh, activity that you have. At this time, it's the sand surfing uh, on the dunes, um, and specifically at the roaring sand dunes. Um, uh, we hire the sand boards out, and people can go and enjoy themselves on the dunes. Then there's two beautiful viewpoints where people can have nice sundowners. Um, as I mentioned, the roaring dunes is quite unique. When you disturb the sand, um, it makes a roaring noise and a, quite, a, quite a vibration, uh, which is quite unique to this time as well. People love to go on photographic outings, and I remember in the earlier days of film, people always ran out of film, and we sold quite a lot of that in our shop. Uh, the latest addition to the activities at Bitsund is our new 4x4 route. Um, what happened in the past, we only utilized the southern part of the reserve, uh, and the northern areas was just lying there, nobody went there. And last, towards the, last, towards the end of 2019, we officially opened the new 4 by 4 route, and that opens up all the northern parts of Witsan, which to me personally is actually the nicest uh, area within the nature reserve. And people uh, go out on their, on their vehicles and they can explore and have a little picnic next to the road. And the photographic uh, opportunities is uh, really, really outstanding. Next slide, please. The facilities, as I mentioned, there's 10 luxury fully equipped chalets. Uh, then we have a caravan park that has got 10 stands uh, for caravans or camping. Uh, there are, uh, well, actually, there were eight bungalows. We're busy building new bungalows uh, because the bungalows that were there was built in 1963 by the, the owner of the farm at the time and they were not fit for purpose anymore. So we decided we we're going to do a rather four proper nice bungalows, uh, but it's not a bungalow anymore. It's, it's, a, it's a nice, uh, we, we'd rather call it sort of almost a budget accommodation and it can house uh, or, uh, two people uh, for overnight and it's got a nice dry outside. And we also putting in the sleeper carts for people that do have maybe have small children, and they're also air conditioned, uh, whereas the previous ones were not. Then we also have a conference room. We can seat about 38 guests, and next to the conference room there's a larpa with an industrial kitchen and a huge braai area outside. And then there's also an amphitheater for people that want to do shows. Or um, or any other, we've housed we've uh, housed some uh, uh, some weddings there. Uh, so that's it's a multi-purpose uh, amphitheater that that people can use. Next slide, please. Then the wildlife is quite unique at Witsund. Uh, they pictures the art fund, which is uh, seen regularly at Witsund. Uh, next next picture, please. And then of course there's the pangolin. The pangolin is currently the most endangered and trafficked animal in the world, and there's a whole lot of research projects going on uh, on neighboring farms from Bitsun all the way down to Prisca, uh, where it is actually the highest concentration of pangolin within South Africa. Next picture, please. And then all, all the other small little game uh, and animals there, the meerkat, the ground squirrel, the mongoose, uh, uh, they, they, they're very friendly at Witsund, and you'll see them around your chalets or wherever you walk in the felt. And uh, next slide, please. And then, of course, the Gemsburg, prolific in, uh, in our area. We also have other planes games, such as uh, Roy Hatterbeest, obviously the Gemsburg and the Springbok, 
and uh, the daker and the little steenbok and all the other animals that with some, uh, because we do not do any hunting there, the animals are very tame. So you'll sit at your chalet at night. Every chalet has got a nice bird bath and you'll see some of the smaller like springbok come and have uh, some water from the bird bath and, and also the dakers, uh, which is quite a unique experience while you're sitting at your, at your chalet, chalet enjoying a glass of wine. Next slide, please. Okay, just a uh, quick facts. Uh, the size of uh, uh, Britsan Nature Reserve is 3,500 hectares. As I mentioned, it opened in 1998. Uh, I've mentioned the wildlife. I've, and I just want to mention again the water. Within the complex, there's 1,200 1, million cubic liters of water underground. Uh, the water is very, very clean. It's cleaner than the water that you have in your, in your bottled water bottles. Um, so we pump it out of the dunes into a reservoir, and from the, there it flows there directly into the camp. So the water that you shower there with is cleaner than normal bottled water. Um, and we also obviously pump out water to the farmers in the surrounding areas. And um, the rates uh, of this one, we actually almost halved the rates since we reopened in after COVID uh, to cater more for the for the local. Uh, uh, a visitor uh, and to make it more affordable and we are still uh, employing those rates at the moment and we do give a 20 percent discount to all uh, tourism trade uh, operators um, so there is uh, something in there for for everybody next slide please um, I think that's me thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to SETSA and to NCTA and to all the people that's uh, dialed into this uh, platform. Thank you very much. Thank you much, Owen. Uh, next up, we've got Swalu, uh, Russell. Oh. Your screen with us, please. Yeah, thanks, Owen. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. And yeah, thank you for joining this afternoon to, to learn a little more of what our magical region has to offer. Um, today I'm going to be talking about Swalu Kalahari Reserve um, and just to give you a bit of background and the type of guest experience. So we're situated in the, the southern tip of the, the green Kalahari. Um, we're on 120,000 hectares. It's the largest private game reserve in South Africa and very easily accessible from Johannesburg and Cape Town. We have a daily uh, Swalu scheduled charter that flies into, into the reserve. Um, Johannesburg, we take off from Fireblade Aviation, which is this incredible FBO facility opposite the, the main terminal. Um, where guests that are flying through there have the opportunity to enjoy an a la carte restaurant, day rooms, executive lounge rooms, and obviously all private aircraft are available for, for charter from, from Fireblade. I think what's the most incredible thing about Swalu is that it originated from a completely denuded landscape. It's an amalgamation of about 45 farms over the years, started off at about 30,000 hectares, and as I said now, sitting at 120,000 hectares. And the sole ambition was to restore that Southern Kalahari to its original state, allowing Mother Nature time and space to do what she needed to do. So you took this completely denuded landscape. We have a, a welcome letter to our guests that just shows the transition from what that area was to, to what it is now and essentially why it's called the, the Green Kalahari. Swalu itself, I mean, by virtue of the, the various habitats, you've got this beautiful Koronaberg mountain range on the eastern side of the, of the reserve. Um, going through these savannah dunes down into the, the salt pans on the western side. So you have this amazing diversity of game on the reserve and just a variety of various safari experiences. Because Swalu has typically been a conservation project from day one and has really evolved into a really successful ecotourism model, um, we've always wanted to align ourselves with sustainable best practice. And we are a fellow member of the long run, um, which recognizes probably 
the ultimate in terms of sustainable management for privately protected areas. And it's based on four principles of culture, conservation, community, and commerce. The ultimate ambition being that we have 22 million acres of nature uh, under protection and affecting the communities in the region of about 2 million people. So talking firstly from a, a commercial side of things, um, Swalu offers a really low impact, high value guest experience. We only have a maximum of 28 adults on the entire reserve and every booking gets the private vehicle garden tracker, which means you have your unlimited time at sightings. Uh, you get to dictate your own safari plan um, and really create your own bucket list experience at the reserve. So you have this incredible diversity of game. You've got your typical predator sightings. You have the most amazing wild dog encounters. Um, and because you have this unlimited time at sightings, you know, you really, you really get to experience the, the game encounter. And because you're covering such a large area, you know, from a Swalu perspective, we always encourage, you know, a four night stay, I think is certainly a, a minimum because of what you get to see and what you get to experience. I think over and above the typical species, I think what you would typically find in an arid savanna are those unusuals that I think are on everybody's bucket list. As we, we heard earlier, you know, things like the art fark, you've got brown hyena, the African ground pangolin. Um, and then obviously, I think synonymous with the Swalu experience as part of a safari plan is an encounter with, you know, our one or two of our habituated meerkat colonies. You go and sit in the morning and you just see these creatures getting active, prepared for the day, cleaning out their burrows and part of the safari plan. Um, what's also important to note is it's, it's not a, a morning and an afternoon game drive. It really is tailored around the guest experience. Guests can go out for as long as they like. You have some guests that will go out all day um, guests are encouraged to get off the vehicle, you walk, you understand the flora and fauna. There's so many other activities over and above the, the vehicle experience. I think any person of any age, any level of experience, I think part and parcel of the that Swalu journey should entail a horse ride. You get to spend two hours in the bush just experiencing it from a completely different angle. You've got the helicopter flips. We have two sleep out experiences. We've got the Malori, which is undercover. And then we have the Naledi, which is completely under the stars. And I think geared more towards that intrepid type traveler. And then for downtime, we have the, the spa facility. And crucial to the guest experience is the, um, the Swalu research. Um, our foundation currently has about 12 projects on the go. And every guest that comes to Swalu experiences some kind of research in some in some form and that's about meeting researchers out in the field uh, we have an amazing project at the moment which is the kalahari endangered ecosystem project which actually looks at the impact of climate change on multiple species and really something that guests can get involved in whilst they are on the reserve um, the community i mean we have the most incredible clinic that services about 120 kilometer radius of the reserve, you know, we do about 9,000 patients um, a year. We have a wonderful school and certainly an opportunity for guests to experience what happens behind the scenes. As part of our cultural heritage, you know, Swalu is home to a number of the Bushman etchings dating back to the San Middlestone age. And again, an opportunity for guests just to experience something unusual. It would form part and parcel of a safari plan where guests would go on a game drive and then you go up a walk up the mountains and you just have this most amazing archaeological experience, but with these incredible views. Because we're malaria free, we do a number of three generation family tri uh, trips. Um, children under 12 stay free when sharing with parents. And we have a wonderful junior ranger program where kids get involved in all sorts of things. They they get to do plaster casting, they make bows and arrows out of the raisin bush. So certainly kept educated and entertained. Um, equal to the safari experience is the culinary journey. We just, um, our entire culinary experience is curated by 
Jan Hendrik van der Westhuizen, who has a restaurant in Nice. And I think he's one of two South African Michelin star chefs. And on the 1st of April, he'll be opening his second restaurant called Klein Jan at Swalu. And every guest will have the opportunity to go and really um, enjoy something quite different, this unbelievable journey and these flavors of the, of the Kalahari. With every dining experience is completely different. We never do the same meal in the same venue. Guests certainly have a variety of options and there's no set dining times. We cater around the guest experience. So a typical, you know, I suppose a summer's evening, some guests might go out on drive and come back at 10 in the evening and have dinner. Other guests might have dinner at six, seven in the evening, go out at nine o'clock and come back at four or five in the morning on a full moon on a summer's day. So really completely tailored around the guest experience. As far as the accommodation is concerned, we have two camps. We've got the Motsi, which is our main camp. Uh, it's got nine lechai, which is a suite. And so a maximum of 18 adults. This just gives you an idea of the, the look and feel and the type of experience. We renovated in 2000, middle of 2019. So incredible nuances of the, the Southern Kalahari. The room's absolutely amazing. As I mentioned, you know, children under 12 stay free when sharing with parents. And then of the nine suites, we have three family suites. So you've got this lounge area and the second room for, for the children. So catering to older children or if you're traveling with extended families. And then about a 40 minute game draft further south is Takuni, which is the private homestead. So you have five suites under one thatch roof. And this is an exclusive use experience. I mean, the most incredible surroundings, this natural amphitheater of mountains. And here we offer a tiered rate dependent on the, the number of guests. And what we've done over the last couple of months and what we're doing going forward is we're offering a number of promotions, a number of you know, length of stay, a number of packages to, to try and encourage our guests to come and spend a few more nights at Swalu to really understand what that Southern Kalahari is all about. And thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Russell. Okay, so next up, sorry, I'm just looking for my yeah. Hi, this is Alri from Popcars from Tank. Can everybody hear me? Yes, thank you very much, Alri. I just and says, welcome to everybody. Goedemiddag is Afrikaans. Good afternoon. <laughs> I'm here to present to you Nibot Vol and the surrounding areas and most importantly, Popcars from Tank. Can everybody see the screen? Uh, not yet. Just a moment. Let's try that again. Is everybody there? See, we can't see your screen yet. Presentation up on your side. There we go, it's starting to share, thank you. Wonderful. Welcome everybody. Um, I will be talking about Nivetville as a tourism destination and then more specifically about Pop Girls Fontaine Guest Farm. Where is Nivetville located? In relation to Captain, we are four hours drive north and we are one of the gateways to the Northern Cape from the Western Cape. So you will be traveling straight through the Northern Cape after us. So what makes Nivertville so special? It is located on the Book of Cloud Plateau where a Ferrari is not just a car and a spinnaker is just not a spider. They are jazzy little flowers. We are the bulb capital of the world 
with the most beautiful sandstone architecture buildings and extraordinary biodiversity. Nieuwertville is a place of hidden treasures. Um, it offers a wide range of activities ranging from botanical, geology, historical, and even something for the adventurers. While taking part in these activities, you can enjoy local food and great accommodation in various locations in this area. Try our traditional skeins cook with nice coffee. Natural wonders like the Nieuwertville waterfall, glacier pavement, quirity forest, and the thousands of bulb species that has earned Nieuwertville the reputation as the bulb capital of the world. The diversity of the bulbs is helped by the eating habits of Africa's largest rodent, the porcupine. Then there is the Huntam Botanical Garden, which is the biggest botanical garden in the world with pollinator insects that roam there with long time, from long time flies to oil collecting bees. What to do in Newartville? Some of the other activities include viewing flowers on the different farms in the area in flower season, which is in August till mid-September, hiking and cycling on different routes, visiting the rooibos farms when in production in January till March. Newartville is also the perfect location to host small weddings and other events. The town is also the gateway to the northern interior, so please don't forget that. <laughs> so next, I will be talking about Popkeil's Fontaine Guest Farm. Popkeil's Fontaine is located 23 kilometers south of the town near Whitville. Just a short drive will take you to one of the most beautiful farms in the area. Popkeil's Fontaine is a working farm that has been looked after by six generations fun bakes. Our farm activities consist of SA Mutton Merinos, Robos Tea, and a small boutique olive grove. In 1986, we started integrating agritourism into our activities. We have grown the tourism segment to become an internationally renowned destination. The farm has recently been proclaimed as a protected environment to ensure protection of the unique biodiversity on the farm. This was done in partnership with e Environmental Affairs and Northern Cape Environmental Affairs and EWT. The biggest secret is that we have a canyon on the farm, as you can see behind me, with the most beautiful cliff drops of about 100 meters high. The hiking and bike trails take you to this extraordinary views. Accommodation at Park Coast Montaigne Guest Farm there is something for everybody's taste, from sandstone cottages in the nature to the historical restored Mikey's Fontaine Bar and the luxury the Lander Guest House. For the adventures, we have a campsite. You can either be self catering in some of them or pre order meals that is served on your request. Activities at Pop Girls from that Guest Farm include breathing fresh open air, not hear anybody else around you. Get the blunt thumping with mountain biking and trail running on the five different routes. If you don't have your own bike, you can rent one from us. Hiking on the 12 kilometer round hiking trail, swimming in your private pool at your cottage or at the natural rock pool above the waterfall. Guided tours is available for flowers in flower season and out of season we have rock art, geology, and fauna flora drive throughout the year. It is done by the fifth generation owner, Willem van Beek. There's also in flower season, the flower drives in self drive and stargazing in the clear career sky from the comfort of your cottage. Does anybody have any questions? If you do, please contact us on our e email address and we'll answer you as soon as possible. And thank you for your time and hope to see you soon. Thank you very much, Ali. Um, guys, next up, we've got Julie from the Tankwa Camino. Julie, over to you. You can start sharing your screen. Hi, everyone. 
Um, I'm sharing my screen with you. Let's see. All right, so I'm talking a little bit today about the Tangwa Kamuna. It was established in 2013. Um, Dani Pitasha, founder of Tangwa Kamuna, had a dream, grandfather's grave in the Tangwa Kamuna, to his other grandfather's grave in Rosenville. His dream became a reality in 2013. He wanted to show people the pure rhythm of life, the utmost raw piece of earth, the Tangwa Kamuna, but the Tangwa Karua is forever in his heart. Today, he's still living the dream, and with the help of his wife and a spectacular team, he took more than 900 hikers, over 25 plus Caminos, through the Tangwa Karua. This is the first ever registered Camino in South Africa. The Tangwa Camino is a modern day great trek, which will take participants through one of the most starkly beautiful areas of our country, the Tangwa Karua. The walk will be 200 and 256 kilometers over 10 days and between two towns, Alfinia and Sierras. It is here where the boundary between two provinces road that connects two adjoining towns. And each day you will walk an average of 27 kilometers. There you, will, there you will discover your true self. So what to expect from the support team? We have a well-equipped support team consisting of a chef, a nurse, a driver, mental supporter and an overall manager. You will receive extraordinary cooked food around an open fire, sweet treats, coffee and tea, and a daily supply of fresh water. Your belongings will be transported and mental health support will be available if needed. Inner strength and a strong mind will keep you on track, but your emotions need to be as educated as your intellect. It is important to know how to feel, how to respond, and how to let life in so that it can, it can touch you. This was a saying from Jim Ron. This is why the Camino is considered as much a spiritual pilgrimage as it is a test of physical endurance. The challenge is to get up every morning for 10 days and take on an average of 27 kilometers per day. It's a test of any hiker's ability. Hiking the Camino, the Tangwa Desert, will become your drug for 10 days as you will walk through one of the most breathtaking landscapes. God is indeed in all the detail. Now, how, should, how fit should I be? That's the question. Important to know at first is why do you want to walk the Tangwa Camino? Is it for fitness? Do you like being outdoors? Are you doing it for a cause? Or do you want to overcome an obstacle in your life? Maybe this is your first ever intense challenge. For us, it's more a mind of a matter situation. No need to see it as a competition. We had hikers as young as 12 and as old as 75 years old. So be prepared to walk on gravel for at least 15 kilometers a day. Shoes are important. Recently, we added the Busmanland Camino to our list, which will take place 8 to 22nd of May for the first time ever from Kofinia to Garis, over 15 days. We have our Enduros, Sterrewag, Otterkloof, Antam and Bedou Enduros. And information on above can be seen on our website, which will be on the second last slide. Yeah, all the, all the dates and the days and the prices. Um, now, how to register, please contact us and visit our website, www.tanguacamino.com. Here you will find the dates, the costs, and so much more. We usually accommodate no more than 60 hikers per Camino or Enduro, so please remember that limited space. There's only limited space, so jump on the opportunity. Your, your epic Camino journey will take you through vastly different landscapes. 
a journey only imagined by many and one that will stay with you long after you've shaken the Karua dust from your hiking gear. Thank you so much for listening and the opportunity for me to be part of this presentation. We are also on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter as Tangwa Camino. Thank you. Thank you very much, Judy. Uh, next up, Donna Swanepoel. Donna, are you ready with your presentation? You'll be presenting about Namakwa Silver Sands. We met Donna on, on Monday afternoon. I saw Donna earlier. So Donna, you are still muted. Just unmute yourself. You're still muted. I'm sorry for that. No problem. You can go now ahead. Thank can, you. Now we can start whatever we're supposed to do. Um, let me just quickly share my screen. Um, okay. All right. There we go. Let me just. Can you see it, Roland? Yes, we can. Just start your slideshow first. Okay. Um, Thank you very much. I, all right, I'm Donna Swanepoel, and um, I'm I'm the, the, the owner and uh, my tour guide, uh, as I say, chief cook and bottle washer. I'm doing the the catering as well, full catering, um, all meals, all drinks, um, everything that you need on the on the trail. Uh, we will will supply for you uh, um, on the trip. The Marcos Silver Sands, the trail is situated in the newly part of the Namakwa National Park, which is about 80 kilometers west of Garis, the closest town to us. And it's situated in 34,000 hectares um, of land that was um, previously belonged to the Beers, but it is on a 99 a uh, year lease given to National Park to look after it. The hike is a, fi is a five night, six day trail. That is for uh, days in and out, four days actually hiking. And um, the hike is over a, a stretch of um, land that is uh, quite unique. To you to the macro land. Um, the, 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 the biosphere and the uh, area around the around the, 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 the area that we are doing the hike. Let me just quickly get some minutes. I can't see myself, but yeah, okay. Um, oh, so let me just go back one. Sorry for that. Um, the hike is 48 kilometers long over, over, over three days that we hike. First day, 16 kilometers. Uh, the second day, 18 kilometers. And the third day is 14 kilometers. And then one day, we go out and visit on a club bay in the area there to, just to support the local people in that area as well, because they are really rely on tourism in that area. Um, we take groups of, of between eight and 16 people and due to, that is due to the COVID-19 restrictions because we are not allowed to take in, uh, more people on a trip, but bigger groups is quite difficult to handle. Uh, so we stick to eight, between eight and 16 people. Uh, what do we offer? Well, Namakwa land offer a lot of things. 
uh, especially the rural area, the vastness of the area, um, long outstretched beaches, uh, unspoiled sand dunes, and most of all during the, the flowering season, which is August and September, there's a, a, a display, you can enjoy yourself in the display of, of uh, flowers. The flower diversity is more uh, Feige felt and like uh, you, your Rasenki balls and uh, scarb also, it's more bushy type of type of area than the, the fine flowering, you know, the fine flowering at um, like the Namakwa daisies and those type of flowers as so more Feige felt, which is, which is uh, um, a more hardy plant and on the sand dunes along the coast, they survive with, uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, the mist and the fog that comes in at night. So the flowers are there longer than, than inland where it's warm and arid and dry. Accommodation, uh, we put up camp at Bambus Camp inside the Namakwa, uh, Namakwa National Park. Uh, that consists of three by three meter tents, as you can see it, uh, fitted with stretchers and camping mattresses. Uh, everything that, that, the, that is there, we need to take in from wood, water, everything, there's nothing there. Uh, we've got the hot showers there that works from a donkey system. Um, and that is only for in the afternoons when people come back to have a nice hot shower after a long uh, um, hike uh, on, the, on, the, on, the, on, the, um, on the beach or wherever the hike for that day was. Uh, we've got a nice communal tent put up where you can relax, where meals have been served. We've got a fully equipped kitchen. Uh, in a, uh, on the right hand side, we can't see it here. Uh, I don't put a photo on it, but it's fully equipped with everything that needed. Um, where meals are prepared from a start up to dessert at the end. It's normally either three or four course meals that we that we that we uh, cater to the to the to the um, clients. Breakfast is uh, also. Um, uh, a full full course breakfast. Lunch consists of a lunch pack with fruit and uh, cold drinks or snacks together with it. The, the toilet systems are eco uh, really via loose that is being maintained by national parks. On the on the hike, we'll visit the Spook River uh, Spook River Caves, which is a heritage site. The first um, evidence of, of, of domestic animals were found here, sheep, uh, which was in 1987 when they found it. And that was from the oldest fossils that they found of domestic animals in South Africa. Uh, the seal colony is one of the biggest seal colonies along the West Coast. And it's on the, on, the, on the shore, you can take close up pictures right uh, at them. So, uh, and uh, yeah, and at the end of the day of the hike, we'll visit McLaren's Beacon, have a nice sundowner and some snacks there. And for the bird watchers, we've uh, identified over 200 species of birds in that area. And because there's, there's um, so less movement, and with all the flowers, and there's a lot of insects, uh, and it's a real paradise for bird lovers and insect lovers. The wildlife is Arbius and uh, Hemsbok. They were introduced about uh, five years ago. The dikers are there, rattles are there, um, and uh, all the other little bokis, Roy Cut from Predator side is a Roy Cut, and the wild, African wildcat. And um, African wildcat and uh, jackal and the bat ears and that kind uh, of thing. That's uh, that's from the cat side and from the dog species. Uh, there's quite interesting rock formations like Mr. Abul. 
we had, uh, what is on along the on the, along the, 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 the third day hike. Um, and when we visit Honekla Bay, we will visit the historical wreck of the Aristia, which was a sorry for that. Um, yeah, I'm still supposed to work in the pharmacy as well, but uh, sorry for that. The, um, we'll visit the Honakla Bay, we'll visit the, the wreck of the Aristia, which is historical. It uh, ran aground in 1945 during the Second World War when it was, uh, it used to be a, a, a fishing trawler for INJ. Sorry guys, I just get it. Uh, just get rid of the phone there. As I said, uh, in Honor Club Bay, we'll visit the, the wreck of the Aristia. Uh, it ran aground in, in 1945 during the Second World War. Um, it was a fishing trailer, a trawler, um, which was summoned to, 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 to be a minesweeper at that stage. And one night when the crew got drunk, they uh, misjudged themselves and they landed on the rock where, they, so, where, 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 where the wreck is lying. Spitfire Rock is an amazing rock formation where you can take the most beautiful pictures. Um, and uh, yeah, and then from there we visit, um, no. from there we, we have lunch at one of the local restaurants, normally at Sam, Sammy's restaurant or the Roy Spinnacop. Uh, whoever can 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 support can um, cater for us during that day, and uh, yeah, and then on on the Friday we when we go all the way back to Litzville, which is uh, my hometown, and uh, this is where we're having a nice wine taste at the second biggest bulk cellar in in South Africa, and. Uh, with some nice cheese platters that they serve for us. And this is where we say our goodbyes. And um, yeah, and from there, just make sure you don't miss out on this trip. Make sure you've got enough warm clothes and uh, you'll be up for the journey of a lifetime. Contact details, the map of Silver Sands, you can contact us on the cell phone or on the email or on our website. And thanks for the opportunity. And um, yeah, enjoy it. And all I can say is happy hiking. Thank you very much, Donna. Uh, guys, we've still got two more presentations left and then we're done. I know we, we're running a little bit late, uh, but next up we've got Malcolm. And Malcolm is from uh, Namaqua Active Hop On Tours. Malcolm, if you'd like to start your presentation for us. All right. Yes, see crazy cool products here in the Northern Cape. Cheers, guys. All right. Uh, my name is Malcolm. I'm the owner of the historic Okip Country Hotel. Uh, we're situated in the heart of the Makulan in, um, I just want to share my screen. Uh, situated in the heart of the Macolan on the N7, just off the N7, uh, and the perfect stopover between Cape Town uh, on the way to Namibia or back, or on the way to Windhoek. And there we go. Uh, yes. All right. So you're not going to have any sound because I'm just going to narrate. Um, can everybody see that? Yes, yeah, we can. All right, brilliant. All right, so we've got the Okip Country Hotel, and Okip is a historic town that, that was found, founded by Simon van der Stel in 1685. And we were also the first commercial uh, mining town in South Africa, uh, which started in 1855 by the English from Cornwall. Um, we were also at the turn of the century, we were the richest copper mine in South Africa. 
Um, every day at five o'clock, we have a historical uh, history and mining tour at the hotel. So as you book in, that's free for an hour. You can just uh, arrange it in advance. And we've got an on-site museum. We've, we've got uh, the mine. This is just a, a few of the activities that we have uh, also at the well, at that hotel will give you. Um, I've created the hop on tours, which is uh, just one of the adventures that we take you on so that you don't just stay one night and don't just come for the flowers. You can, you can visit us for, for a bit longer. We'll keep you busy as, as long as we can. And then um, some of the other stuff that we do around this area is we've uh, we've got the, well, I can organize anything in the Macoland basically for you. So if you need to go on a shipwreck tour, like Dana said just now, I can organize that for you. Then we've got Bushwhack. She, uh, Mordi is a good friend of mine. She's going to be just after me and show, show how to do the river rafting. And um, uh, so for the, for the young people, there's, there's that to, to look forward to as well. Um, then uh, that is Gielkrans, which is, and, and the other side is Namibia. That's just an hour's drive from Springbok. That's at the Namibian border. And right, so when you finish with this little trip, I'm going to take you on, a, on another trip. Let me just exit that one. Um, stop that. All right, I'm going to share another screen with you now. Uh, so from there we go to, I'm going to put sound on now. So I'm going to be muted for a while. Um, we go on a cultural tour. This is also a one day trip. We go to the, the Kamis Mountains, which is probably about half an hour to an hour's drive. Well, probably an hour's drive from here. Now, the company is called Hop On Tours because if you have your own vehicle and, you, and you're willing to go on gravel road yourself, then, then you can go on your own uh, or I can hop on your vehicle, uh, mm -hmm. me or one of my colleagues. And if you, don't, you know, if you don't have the proper vehicle, then I will supply a vehicle for you at, at extra cost and you can hop on with me and I'll show you a good time. Um, I'm, I'm just going to quickly show you a bit of the, the cultural tour. This one is going to have sound with it, so I'm just going to be muted for a while. Right. Yeah, so that is basically it. Uh, I ended it off with the Kuva Tree Forest, that we visit the Kuva Tree Forest. And from there, we go to Mkosin and Bumpy, that are the pictures that I just showed you guys there. And then we, we, we yeah, at Mkosin and Bumpy, they play, he plays on his violin that he just showed, and that is just something to, to behold. And, and, and this is exactly what, what Namakuland is all about. If you just drive past Springbok and, and you go into, uh, and you stop one night and you drive through, you're never gonna be able to see what we've got to show you. The important thing is that you book a tour guide when you're in the area, and especially the foreign travelers or the guys that come from uh, you know, far away from Johannesburg and East London and, and Kabecha, you know, um, they can all, they can all, the important thing is to book a guide, get someone that knows the area because they will show you the most unique things that you won't be able to see on your own. Um, and uh, yeah, 
that's that's basically it. And the, and the and the fact of the matter is, if you if you contact people that's in the area that was born and bred in the area, they will be able to point you in the in the right direction and to the coolest, most unique South African experiences, especially in the rural areas. So yeah, that's it. Uh, that's it from that is it for me. You can contact me on info at OKIP. I see there was a wrong email address that was put in there. So if we can, if if anybody is interested in it, you can go to okip.co.za and contact me, Malcolm. I'm also part of the Namakwa Coastal Route. So um, that is there is also a website, Namakwa Coastal Route, that you can visit. Thank you very much. Cheers, everybody. Thank you very much, Malcolm. Uh, guys, just to remind you, everybody would re will receive the brochure with all the contact details and some more info um, with uh, on all the, the properties that were showcased and activities that were showcased today. And uh, we'll have some time for questions and answers. If you have any questions, pop them into the Q&A area. I know we're running a bit late, uh, but we'll endeavor then to, to get back to you on email uh, with any of the answers. Guys, and then we've got our last uh, presenter, uh, Modi Bleach from Bushwhack Adventures that Malcolm also just mentioned now. So Modi, over to you. Good day, can you hear me? You are a bit soft. If you maybe move a bit closer to your microphone. Okay. Um, can you hear me better now? Yes, that's much better. Thank you. Okay. Okay, oh, sorry, I'm just... Um... We paddle better than we work with computers. Um, so. That's funny. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> Hi, guys. My name is Morty Bleach. I'm from Bushwhacked Auto Adventures. Um, we do river rafting trips on the lower part of the Orange River. We are situated 688 kilometers from Cape Town and 1,200 and something from Johannesburg. The closest airport would be Uppington, but that's still far. So, but it's a beautiful drive because you drive through the entire Northern Cape, which you all saw now is absolutely amazing. Our base camp, Fiddler's Creek, is situated on the banks of the Orange River. It's 10 kilometers from the Fjordstrift Namibian border post. Fiddler's Creek, the campsite, has nine overland sites, perfect for bigger groups, as well as smaller sites for private groups. Um, we also have glam sites and upgrades for people who do not feel like camping. Um, it's from here that we do our river rafting trips, starting with a half day. That's our most popular one. That one is for people that's on their way to Namibia or maybe from Namibia down to South Africa and they don't have a lot of time. So we do that trip twice a day. It's a seven kilometer trip. We drive up seven kilometers upriver and paddle back to the camp. Also popular is our full day trips, which is a 14 kilometer trip into the Richtersveld area. Um, we also have a two day trip, um, what we call a weekender. So people can come and do the, the, the two full days um, over a weekend. Um, then on the way back from these full day trips, we do we stop off at the petroglyphs, which is the rock and um, ancient rock engravings, and Hillcrans, which Malcolm just spoke about. So just to give us that, that on the other side, that's Namibia. Um, we have two different four day trips. For somebody who's um, selling trips, these are very popular. Um, we, um, the, uh, the first one was the Richter Star trip. This is the one that we used to do um, before, the only one we used to do. And then COVID sort of um, <laughs> forced us to get another one um, that we, did, we don't go over the border post. And this, the Hengri section, we call it, and it's absolutely beautiful as well. The Richtersveld started our campsite on the South African side of the border. It's about a 55 kilometer paddle over four days. It ends on the Namibian side of the river, but passports are needed. The border posts are open now, so we can do that again. And then the increase section, we drive from here, and it's about a two hour drive. Um, it's a six, 60 kilometer paddle over four days, and the trip ends in Fjordstrup. There is no passports needed for that. Um, four day, five nights, sometimes people get confused. Um, 
the first and the last night are back at camp and we have spent three nights on the river with our four day, five nights trips. Um, what does the trip include? All meals from arrival to departure, APA qualified guides, all pickup and drop offs, all equipment. We use two man inflatable canoes. That's very forgiving. Um, first and last night camping at the base camp. Uh, the trips are perfect for school groups, families, and as team building activities. So, yeah, you guys are free to uh, welcome to um, contact us at bushwhack.co.za, and we're also on the internet and on Facebook and on um, very lively on Instagram. Thank you very much. Awesome. That looks like a proper adventure. Thanks, Modi. Uh, guys, then we've got uh, we've got to the end of our uh, presentation, our different presentations and, and properties. Um, and then I'll hand over to Diana for our prize draw and our close. Hello, everybody. I'm sure you had a wonderful afternoon traveling through the Northern Cape. So we've we've designed the presentation. So travel, it takes you on a natural trip around the Northern Cape. We started in Cape Town to Sutherland, around the bottom end of the Karua Highlands, Fraserburgh, around to, to um, the R, um, to Khoi Khoi at Hope Town, to Kimberley and the outskirts of Kimberley. Traveled to a quick uh, detour or a short left to Tswalu, back again to, to Witsand. And then we started again from Cape Town up on the Namako coastline, as you heard all those wonderful experiences in, entered with Mori on the Namibian coast. So that is just giving you an idea how easy it is to really develop itineraries and to sell the Northern Cape. But as you heard, we are all here to help you to design those amazing um, itineraries to inspire your clients to come and visit us and experience the Northern Cape. Um, so I heard that I have to announce the winners, but I wonder if we can please ask um, if we can send the lucky winners a, um, an email and say that you're winning. We have decided we have such wonderful prizes. We will do three winners. Um, as I said in the beginning, we will take some of the prizes and add it in so you have a journey around the Northern Cape and lucky three people will have that journey. We will send an email to you by tomorrow afternoon and then you can please just advise us when it is convenient for you to take up your price. Any other persons that want to do trade fan trips to the Northern Cape, you're welcome. We are starting our new financial year in April. So we are looking at hosting some, some tour operators and trade into the Northern Cape. So please just be in touch. Um, you can be in touch with me. Oh, I see Glenda is on here. We work closely with Glenda. So Glenda will also have to co coordinate some trade fam trips into the Northern Cape. So thank you very, very much for staying with us, especially those that have stayed the length of this. Um, so we look forward to welcoming you and your clients to the Northern Cape. And thank you very, very much to Lebo and the team from Satsa and um, Roland to try to make this so easy for us as well. And again, thank you to you for your time. Have a good afternoon. Bye-bye.